I'm Captain Christian J. Callender, commander of the 29th Mobile Public Affairs Detachment. Welcome to our year in review. Earlier this year, we joined Lieutenant Christopher Baumgartner, the 231st Chemical Company, and the Maryland Air National Guard for chemical response training. We're here with our friends from the Maryland Air National Guard working in this joint environment, seeing how they do things in terms of chemical decontamination and hazardous material handling, and also showing them how, how we do our specific skills so that we can come together in, in this unfamiliar environment and get the best of both worlds. Remember, it's joint. It's not just us. And that's why we're, we're not just only teaching them. They're not only just teaching us. You know, it's, going to, it's a mix. They haven't had this kind of unique training before and they're using this as, as a great opportunity to, uh, to learn new skills. Just proof that the 231st stands at the ready. Our own private first class, Patrick Rooney, joined members of the 244th Engineers on their mission to restore the leadership reaction course on Gunpowder Military Reservation. Maryland National Guard soldiers from the 244th Engineer Company worked to repair the leadership reaction course at Gunpowder Military Reservation this week. So we came up with a design that would uh, alleviate some of the, the stress of having very long boards and also made it sectional so that if a section does get damaged, that one section can be taken out and repaired or replaced. The second platoon soldiers replaced weathered and aged sections throughout the structure using mostly materials reclaimed from the previously existing course. Uh, today we came out here to redo the LRC course. We rebuilt the panels on the walls and we're going to redo some of the um, obstacles that need to be redone, replacing some broken wood, some broken boards, and the handrails on the tops because they're splintering. Reporting for the 29th Mobile Public Affairs Detachment, I'm Private First Class Patrick Rooney. A fine mission well executed. Other units, like the Maryland Army National Guard Counter Drug Task Force, had a more unorthodox mission. This summer, Staff Sergeant John Higgins got out of the dugout and onto the field to bring us this story. On Cal Senior's field in Aberdeen, Maryland, Maryland Army National Guardsmen had a mission, a mission to teach baseball. Today we have uh, the Badges for Baseball camp going on. We have kids from all over the United States coming in today. We are going over baseball drills. First, we're getting them warmed up. Uh, then we're gonna go over batting, uh, teach the kid how to uh, throw on the infield. After we get them on the infield, get them on the outfield, they're gonna work on every aspect of the baseball game today. Then military folks, we're gonna get changed into our uniforms. All of our National Guardsmen, we're gonna get changed to their uniforms and some tactical gear. We're gonna bring out our tactical vehicles so the kids will get a chance to ask us questions and get a good feel about what it is that the military does. In addition to learning baseball skills, teaching kids about the Maryland National Guard, there was one more thing the Maryland Guardsmen were required to do. Have fun. I'm Army Staff Sergeant John Higgins, 29th Mobile Public Affairs Detachment. No one does the Cupid Shuffle like the Maryland Guard does the Cupid Shuffle. However, our soldiers are just as capable in other fields, and Staff Sergeant Michael Davis joined the Best of Maryland in this mini documentary about our best warrior competition. I'm uh, Command Sergeant Major Thomas Baird. I'm the State Command Sergeant Major for the Maryland Army National Guard. As we have our 2014 Maryland Army National Guard NCO and Soldier of the Year Best Warrior Competition. It's an event we hold every spring uh, so that we can select our winners to send on to the regional competition. This is uh, Station 4. It's the request for medic back. After that, they will be given the scenario for move under direct fire, and they will be evaluated for their three movement techniques as they move through the course to the end point, trying not to be hit. That's station one. We'll be clearing the weapon, disassembly of the weapon, talking through the procedures of cleaning and maintaining the weapon, reassemble the weapon, and performing a functions check. This station, station number three, this is their controlling bleeding station, arterial bleeding and moving it casually using a skid litter. It's a search of suspect vehicle for an IED. In our theater of operations, we've noticed a lot of remote control IEDs. 
So we wanted to give them the visual indicator of the receiver with the wires coming out the antenna, but they are in a simulated ECM environment so that that threat is neutralized, but they still have to recognize that item. For young soldiers, the most important thing leaders can do is to try to look in their formation and find our future competitors. And some soldiers you have to actually go and speak with and encourage them to participate. But I would say for a soldier coming up through the ranks, participating here and doing well is really good for their career. This is our state and we have our best NCOs and soldiers in the state representing each of our units. For the uh, NCO of the year from the state of Maryland, is Sergeant Michael Firth, Group C, 158. Being the NCO of the year is a, a culmination of my past six years in the National Guard, working hard, um, learning and striving to be the best soldier I can be. And I've never seen this, I've never seen this happen before. We've never had the winners from the same unit. So the winner in the, in the uh, soldier category is Specialist Michael Robinson, Group C. Representing um, my squadron, um, representing my unit, Charlie 1158 Cav uh, Lurs. Um, I wanted to represent them well, and that's why I'm here. It felt great um, that myself and, and Sergeant Firth both, both won Soldier and NCO of the Year. Um, I, I don't think that um, the unit expected anything less, and I don't think that we expected anything uh, less as well. Winning is a mixed blessing. Obviously, it's really cool to be on top. It's great to win, uh, but the hard work starts again uh, tomorrow. Thanks to those soldiers for setting an example of leadership. In solemn dignity, we now take a moment to thank those who came before us. This year, the Maryland Guard dedicated a gym to our fallen brother, friend, and mentor, Major Robert J. Marchanti. This weekend, an athletic facility at Camp Frederick Military Reservation in Reisterstown, Maryland, has been named in honor of Major Robert J. Marchanti II. Marchanti was a member of the Maryland National Guard who was killed in action in Kabul, Afghanistan on February 25, 2012. It really meant a lot for me to be able to see this kind of unfold today and as a dedication not only to him but to his family. Ever since he was 14 years old, he's been working out. And then he was a phys ed teacher for 17 years. I think he would have chose the gymnasium. He wouldn't have wanted some fancy place. He would have wanted the gymnasium where every man was coming in to work out and would see his face and, and remember him. Here at Camp Frederick Military Reservation, his memory will live on for his family and generations of service members to come. That's all for this year in review. Be sure to check our video channel's website for more videos from this year and previous years. Coming soon, we'll have more coverage of Maryland units and soldiers just like you. Until next time, I'm Captain Christian J. Callender, 29th Mobile Public Affairs Detachment.